Hola, buenos dias. Good morning, my beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending some of your time here with me today. It's your girl here, Daniela, Miss Four Lizard, the planning diva. And I want to write a love letter to my long distance boyfriend, um, Steven. And I thought it would be fun to take you along with me in this process because um, letter writing, I feel, is such uh, an important part of like paper crafting and stationary life. And um, I have so much filler paper that I want to do something with it. Um, and I think it'd be fun to write letters and who better to write a letter to than your very own boyfriend or husband or partner or girlfriend or wife or spouse or whoever is your important person in your life. Um, I definitely love writing letters. I'm always someone who likes to write um, handwritten and birthday cards and Christmas cards. And I don't really write too many letters um, outside of the holidays and like birthdays. But it's something I want to get into more, and so I think I'm going to uh, start off with writing to my boyfriend. We are long distance, and so I thought it would be cute to do something like this. So if you're interested in seeing how I write a love letter to my partner, just keep on watching. So I think I'm going to be using... Um, filler paper from um, my stack of filler paper here. I'm trying to decide whether I want to use the floral um, the floral lined paper from their um, Mickey Mouse, the floral Mickey Be Happy box, or if I want to use the wildflower um, filler paper. I think I might use the the, the wildflower um, be happy box filler paper that came in their uh, their latest be happy box I have all of my filler paper in um, this big immense um, planner stack so we'll set that to the side here and I'm thinking that I might cut off the uh, the uh, the happy planner like ring holes there because it looks kind of funky. To, to keep them on if you're not going to like stick them into a happy planner. Um, so maybe I will, or should I leave them on? Do you think it would look weird if I left it on? What if I cut it off? I think it would look better if I cut it off, honestly. Let's cut it off. Whoa, now I have all these little pieces. Okay, so we've cut it off with my Fiskars paper trimmer, and then we just have the sheet of paper. I feel like it was kind of crooked, but that's fine. It still looks cute. I think it would be fun to kind of line the outsides of the paper with florals. I think that's a really like fun look that's super simple to achieve, but gives like such a stunning look. So I'm gonna reach for this um, Mega Flower Power sticker book, of course, from the Happy Planner. And let's see if I can find uh, a good, um, good sheet of flower stickers that I can use. Huh, I like these a lot. I might use these. These are cute too. So let's pull that sheet out and start stickering around the, the edges of the paper here. And then we can start to writing. And um, yeah, let me talk a little bit about uh, my relationship, I guess. <laughs> if you're interested in that sort of thing. So I am long distance with my boyfriend. We've been together two and a half years. 
and we met in San Diego. So I'm currently living in San Diego. We met in San Diego. We actually met at work. We both were working for as um, like mentors and um, uh, tutors in a program at the University of California, San Diego. Uh, we were both, I was a graduate student and he was an upperclassman. He was actually an undergraduate student. But before you go all crazy on me, um, he was older than I am. He just started his undergraduate career uh, much later than is, uh, than is um, like, I guess, normal. I mean, people start college, you know, at any age, but it's like people tend to start it around, um, you know, age 18 or 19, um, especially at UC San Diego. Uh, I think like it's pretty common to be 18 or 19 um, when you start college. And so he started it actually much later. So he was an upperclassman and he was actually, he's actually a year older than I am but I was in my last uh, years of, of, as a graduate student because I started graduate school like right after um, undergraduate. Like I did not wait, I went straight into graduate school, which was both a blessing and a curse. And so we were both, um, we were both kind of on our way out of higher education. He actually didn't graduate. He decided to um, withdraw from UC San Diego because it was in the middle of the pandemic. Um, they were doing like remote learning and then they were doing um, hybrid learning and he wanted to start a job in Texas and they were not offering remote learning. And he was at that point also kind of fed up with you see San Diego's academic policies and their um, how they approached learning in the pandemic, and so he just decided to uh, withdraw. And uh, he wanted he decided that he would finish his degree elsewhere, so he withdrew um, and he moved to Austin to start a position there, um, doing some kind of like uh, property property um appraisal work um, honestly i don't know too much about it and he, it was something that he was interested in and he had the opportunity out there so he decided to do that and while it was awesome that he could go out and you know um, start that position it was kind of a hard moment for the both of us because it meant that we were going to have to do long distance and we both knew that that when like a year in after we started dating, we both knew that that was potentially something, you know, that was going to happen because I was also applying to positions in other states and, um, and I, I was very much transparent that if I got, you know, a position in New York or Ohio or even like Canada or something like that, I would take that position. And um, and so he was very supportive of that. He was supportive of me applying to, you know, positions outside of San Diego. And I was also supportive of him, um, you know, applying to positions elsewhere. So it was definitely something that we knew it was happening, might happen. We had that whole conversation uh, months before um, it became a reality. We both talked about, you know, what would happen if we became long distance. And we both were on the same page that we wanted to continue to um, be together and we would try to make it work. So we've been in a long distance for seven months now. And it's been difficult, but we also keep ourselves quite busy. So um, it's actually kind of gone by quickly. And we um, see each other every two months or so, and we take turns flying out to see each other. So it was my turn to see him in uh, late May. And so that's why I went to Austin 
it was my turn to go see him and it's his turn in late July and he's actually gonna come to see me um, defend my PhD. Uh, the graduation ceremony itself is next weekend, it's in mid-June, but the PhD defense, which is a little bit more like intimate and I guess important in terms of like graduating with, from a doctoral program, that's in mid-July. So he's gonna come for the defense, he's not coming for the actual um, graduation ceremony because it was gonna be just like too much, uh, too much like, or too little time in between our last visit to really make sense. And so, you know, it was either gonna be he was coming for the ceremony or the defense and I chose to have him come for the defense because I find that to be a little bit more important than the actual like walking in the ceremony. So that's a little bit about us and our story of being long distance. If you have been long distance, definitely please offer any tips or advice down below or just share your experience of what you know being in a long distance was like. It's definitely been hard and so far we've been weathering it pretty well but um you know who knows who knows I've, I've talked to so many people who say that long distance doesn't work and that it's always like um, a struggle and that you need to try to get out of it as soon as possible but i've also met a lot of people who have done a long distance for years and then eventually like moved in with each other and married so it seems like it's either it either works or it doesn't and yeah it's up to you to um to really to really decide which one it's gonna be so i put the the flowers all around the edges here i think it's so cute i love how it turned out i don't think i'm gonna put them around the edges on the back but i might put some here on the bottom i don't think i have enough stickers to um to like wrap around the edges like i did uh, on the front page so i'm just gonna go ahead and hurry and put these stickers down so i'll speed you up okay so i barely had enough uh florals to line the bottom of the paper there cute though i love it um it looks cute and i finished the entire sticker page here so i can toss that in the trash and then let's see what else do i want to do here i think it would be fun to pull for some mickey mouse stickers especially the ones of mickey and minnie like being all cute together my boyfriend knows that i love those stickers um and <laughs> we always like strike the poses of mickey and minnie kind of like holding hands and such um yeah really cute so let me see if i can find any i don't even know if i have if i have any left let's see this um is just like the stack of all of my mickey mouse um stickers from their original like the original three sticker books that they first released um i thought they were only gonna ever come out with those three and so i just took them apart and put them together and called it like my mickey mouse deck little did i know that they would come out with every single like variation of mickey under the sun that's possible and i bought like almost every single one of course so now i just keep the sticker books separate from each other and um i i don't combine them anymore because oh here it is um because i just that would be quite a bit of sticker books um so it looks like i only have one sticker of mickey and minnie together like that okay that's fine so let me pull these put these away and it's the only sticker on that sheet so um that's nice so i can just toss this uh this sheet when i'm done with it so let me pull up the sticker toss that and then maybe i should put this like here there cute very cute 
And it's always fun to use these antiquarian sticker book stickers in more like, you know, stationery and letters like this because um, these stickers are just really <laughs> interesting and funny. And um, I think they, they look really good on stationery and letters. So I kind of want to add some here and there. So let's see, is there anything that I want to add? I kind of like this one right here. It's kind of too big though. Mm. Maybe this beetle one. I think my boyfriend would like this one. Maybe like, maybe like here. I'm gonna add this beetle here. Very cute. Maybe I'll add something on the back. Okay, I think I'm gonna pull for this one here. It looks like a peacock, like a fantastic peacock. And I think I could put this one at the very top here. I like how the little design on the feathers look like, kind of like little hearts almost. So I think that would be fun. And there we go. I think we have like the letter, the design of the letter all nicely set up. And then for writing, I'm gonna go ahead and write like dear Stephen um using my brush pen let's see I have a brush pen right here I'm gonna write dear Stephen here at the top with my brush pen and then I will go ahead and write the body of the letter and I'll fast forward you I'll speed things up and then I might add a sticker or two here and there and um and then we'll uh fold it up and seal it in the envelope um and then we'll be good so i'll see you at the end Okay, we are done here. The last thing I'm gonna do is I got my Rilakkuma stamp kit, which is so freaking adorable and cute. I got this in little Tokyo at a Japanese bookstore. Or no, I got this like at a Japanese, like uh, just Japanese goods store, but it comes with a little stamp pad and some super cute, uh, tiny little stamps, Ugh, adorable. So I'm gonna, um just stamp around here um these are so cute i love them so much so let me just stamp around the page very very cute 
Okay, I think that's enough. I don't want to cover it completely. <laughs> ah, okay, I'm done. I wrote my letter. I think it looks cute. I hope my boyfriend enjoys reading it. And the last thing I need to do is fold the letter and then seal it and stamp it. And yeah, so for envelopes, I just have this pack of envelopes. I only have a few envelopes left. I only have three left here. Um, so I need to get uh, envelopes at some point. I'm actually thinking of making my own envelopes with scrapbook paper. I might do that instead of buying new envelopes. But first I'm gonna get through these envelopes. These are actually like Japanese style envelopes. So they're vertical as like the open kind of vertically as opposed to like horizontally, if that makes sense. So I just got these at Daiso. I'm gonna fold this, um, this letter and- Okay, I'm back. My dog was barking like crazy. Someone, I think the mailman came. But anyways, I was saying that these envelopes are a little bit thinner than traditional envelopes, so I just have to make sure that um, it fits into the envelope. And I was thinking of also sneaking in one of these, um, some stickers. Yes, they fit. So these are two stickers I picked up while I was in Austin, um, a Revival Coffee sticker and a Voodoo Donut sticker. Um, I picked these up for my boyfriend uh, when we were there and I totally forgot to give uh, give these to him. Um, he likes stickers too. I feel like he likes more like, uh, like kind of these larger like stickers more than like, you know, like happy planner stickers, but he likes, um, stickers. Although he just like puts them in a box. He doesn't like put them on anything. So I've been trying to convince him to like put them in his planner or something. And he does have a happy planner, actually. He has a happy planner, which he barely uses. He just got it to, like, uh, <laughs> to make me feel like he's invested in my, like, hobby and passion. And so he tries using it, but um, it doesn't use it very often. And I want to convince him to, like, put his, like, stickers that he has in that planner because they're just sitting in a box. I don't know why he collects them if he doesn't, like, use them at all. Anyways, so I'm going to tuck those stickers in there for him to use and then I am going to seal this envelope with some glue and then a sticker. And then the last thing I have to do is uh, stamp the envelope. This is, it's a bit funny because these envelopes are kind of vertical. So you see the bottom is here, the top is here, but in the US, our envelopes are horizontal. So, um, you know, I might, I might put two and then from, and then the sticker like right here. I mean the stamp right here. So I put the stamp and then I'll write to and then from here. So I might use boxes for that. Let me grab my colorful boxes, sticker book. I'm going to go with my pink um, boxes from Mojo Jojo Plans. And I will grab two of these boxes here. So I'll put, this one's gonna be two, and then this one is gonna be from, or no, this is gonna be from, and then this is gonna be two. So I'll put that there, and then I will put from, and then two. 
awesome. And then I will go ahead and write my address in those boxes and his address there in that box. And then we will be good to go. And I will put this in the mail and we'll send it off. So thank you so much for um, stopping by and checking out this video. Um, I had so much fun putting this love letter together. And you know what? I totally forgot to like put some lipstick on and then press my lips to the um, to the paper to give that like classic <laughs> lip mark. I was gonna do that. I totally forgot to do that, but um, it's okay. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will catch you in my next video. Happy planning. Bye.